and we're planning to drop a light onto the wreck to be able to illuminate it because, of course, obviously at this depth there isn't much light to, to, uh, to see whatever debris or structure or funnels or cannons, whatever they would have been. But, I mean, it was a big suspense. What would we see? We had been talking about that for months, Mark and I, theorizing how the wreck would be lying. Diving down the shot line, we got 204 meters and then suddenly on the left to our west, we saw a huge uh, black shadow. I thought it was a fishing net that was hanging up from the bottom. And then I looked a little closer, shined the light over and realized that the wreck was actually standing vertically on its nose and thought this is incredible and it was worth the risk of letting go of the line and swimming over to it, which is exactly what we did. When we saw the ship in its inclination, I knew that this would become a world-class event. I've dived on hundreds of shipwrecks, and I've only ever seen one standing up. And it wasn't standing up the way this one was standing up. It was floating, if you like, the other wreck, and it subsequently fell over. But when we got there, it was just mind-boggling to imagine that this has become the most unusual wreck dive ever possible sort of thing. You don't often see battle cruisers standing on their bows 